Hello, it's Joe Lyons, and in this video on regular expressions, we're going to talk to how you can name your subpatterns. And in that, what I like to do <coughs> excuse me, is to uh, add in names, which just help me later on um, programmatically access the, the different variables that I'm capturing, the groups I'm capturing. And so in this regular expression here, I have it where I'm saying, you know, grab the first two things, slash d, slash d, and then look for this um, forward slash, and then look for um, another two digits, and then a forward slash, and then four digits. And so if we look at here in the groups, you'll see group 1 is the 11, right? Group 2 is the 12, and group 3 is the 2016, because I have those four. But what would be nice, instead of saying 1, 2, 3, right, what I like to do is to name them, and what you can do that by saying well, this is going to be month, and here, so you put in this question mark, P, and then the brackets, and in between you put it, um, what you want to name it. Day and year. So now it just makes it a little easier, right? Because now I can, um, programmatically, I can grab and I can reference month instead of trying to remember, oh, it was the first one, the second one, or the third one. Also, um, just to point out here, Sometimes, of course, this could be 09 or just 9, right? So what, what a better approach would be is let's change this to slash D slash D to we're going to change this to say there's going to be w up 1 to 2, right, of those, and same thing for the next one because it also can be the months can be months and days can be um, 1 or 2, and that way if we had another date in here that was, let's say, it was uh, the first uh, 6, 2016. Now it'll match. Um, that would not have matched if we had just had the DD, because, of course, there's one digit here and one digit here. And this way, even if it's zero, right, it'll still match. And it's just a, a more flexible way to do that. Let's also say, let's, let's pretend we wanted to convert this into how Europeans look at dates. Um, and so what we could do is say... Um, but actually, I forgot I had written it already, but um, 3, 2, 1. So it's going to take the third one, so I'm, it's recoding this, where it says 11, 12, 16, and then I say put in the third one, put in the second one, put in the first one. So it goes year, month, day. Um, or actually, yeah, I'm getting confused here. Uh, that's day. Is, yeah, that is right, yeah. Um, but let's say, for some crazy reason, we wanted this to be it there, and we'll put a 1 in here. Right, so it'll it will go. Um, there's something I think would go on with this program. It should obviously not have it in there twice. Um, let me see if I minimize that and re. No, well, I think there's something wrong going on with the program, but uh, it's fine. It's still it, this is the pattern that you can use, and it's just a great simple way of using naming these. When you have a very long one with a lot of variables, it's a great easy way to keep track of which uh, group you are getting. Uh, now in, in the actual program it'll still have something prefacing it, uh, the, the overall name, but this just breaks it down and shows you how you can use the names to help uh, realize what you're grabbing. Um, and let's do one more here. Let's say this was the sentence part, so I'm going to add in here everything in front of that, put that into a group, um, we make that not greedy, and let's get rid of the groups. Let's it just says, so I am recording this on, and then, um, I'm sorry, we, we do need that. So notice this still says 1 here, that's because we haven't named it, right? So, we'll come over here and say question mark P, greater than, less than, and so now I say sentence, right? So it's, it's that easy to, to add in names, which, again, I really like, just because it makes it a lot easier to keep track of what you're working with. Thank you.